Hey guys, it's Taran and welcome to the On Track channel and to the 2022 race ratings for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. So a very warm welcome to the Azerbaijan race ratings, a series taking a more chilled out look at the driver performances. As always, spoilers ahead if you've not seen or heard about the results from the past weekend. Also, do make sure to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoy and subscribe down below for more F1 content every week. Plus for this week's video, an extra little graphic at the end to do with the ratings as a whole, so you'll have to stick around to see that. Now with those two things out of the way, let's get into it. So onto your result with a Red Bull 1-2, Max Verstappen leading Perez home, extending their lead in both championships even more and sitting very pretty at the top. In behind, not the Ferraris, but the Mercedes pair of Russell and Hamilton, both Ferraris DNFing with engine and hydraulic issues. Great results for Gasly and Vettel, then in 5th and 6th, with the Alpines and McLarens filling out positions 7-10. to On to the race itself, and I won't lie, not the most exciting. We didn't really have the battles for the lead that we've seen in the past, obviously quite a bit down to the Ferrari DNFs, but even so it felt pretty quickly that Red Bull had the far superior car on race day. Also, generally felt a sense of people struggling to make moves, which is kind of unusual for Baku. You know, the main straight DRS really didn't seem to do a ton. There were some interesting points, such as Hamilton making his way up the field, Sebastian Vettel having a good race, along with the whole McLaren dynamic and team orders, but on the whole, not the most amazing of races to watch. So, on to rating, and we'll start with your guys' thoughts. As always, a little YouTube poll you can have your say on after each race. But for Azerbaijan, you guys are given an average of 5.9, which I think is a fair result. Definitely not a special one, but also not horrendous. And then personally for me, I've gone a little lower with a 5. I think I definitely had those moments of thinking, hmm, what's happening now, you know, plus we were denied any input from Ferrari really at the front. On to the teams, and Ferrari is who we'll start with. A double DNF and that top spot in the standings is just getting further and further away from them. I'll start with Leclerc, and like Monaco, like Spain, he's not really done anything wrong. I think it was clear Red Bull had the pace advantage, but he did do a good job holding up Verstappen for a number of laps at the start, and definitely had the pace over his teammate Carlos Sainz. He didn't get the best of starts, which does affect his rating a little, but for only completing like a third to 40% of the race, I think an 8 is probably fair. Clearly had the pace over Sainz, did manage to keep Verstappen behind as well, but didn't have the best start and it's hard to give him a grade any higher considering he didn't complete the whole race and there's nothing more to judge upon. Then on to Carlos Sainz and only managing to get 9 laps into the 51 lap race, and issues that really aren't his fault. I was tempted to give a not applicable rating because it was a hydraulic issue, again completely not his fault, but in the 9 laps we did see that I think it was pretty clear Leclerc had the pace over him. I know I think he mentioned in an interview afterwards that he was saving the tyres and was about to push, but we didn't get to see that. So I think for now it'll just be a 6 for science. Maybe the rest would have been better, or maybe worse, but we'll never know. Next up Haas, and generally more disappointment as has sort of been the case for the past 4 or 5 races now. I'll start with Magnussen, who until his engine forced a retirement was actually going along quite nicely. Did lose a place or two off the start, but from there made his way forward past Albon and Bottas and was up to sort of P10-11 after having stopped for hard tyres. So while not a full race, I think a 7.5 is probably fair. Lost a couple places early but was more than making up for it in the laps that he did get in. Then on to Mick and while I want to say a big part of the weekend was him trying to keep the car out of the wall and that probably means he wouldn't be wanting to push any limits, you've still got to try and be competitive and he just really wasn't started towards the back and only finished above Latifi, out of those that finished. You know, every DNF in the race retired from in front of him. He was a long way off Sonoda, who finished ahead of him by the end, so yeah, probably rating-wise, I think it's got to be a 3. Just nowhere pace-wise, but kept it out of the wall, which was important for this weekend. Next up, Williams, and just sort of continuing their run as the slowest team, and just never really looking like they're making progress. For drivers, I'll start with Albon, and a very inconspicuous race really. He made a couple of places up on lap 1 or 2, and then just sort of stuck around in that zone the whole race. Sort of found himself as part of other people's races, just being passed by them after they pitted. Did finish P12, which isn't a bad result, and was a mile ahead of Latifi, but that's kind of to be expected. So I think for Albon, a 6.5 is probably fair. Wasn't helped by making a second stop just before the VSE for Magnussen's retirement as well. 
So then Latifi and last of the finishers by a country mile, obviously not helped by the instant 10 second stop go which wasn't his fault, you know the mechanics touching the car while on the grid after the 15 second warning, but I still think that based on the pace that he showed would have been comfortably last. Like Schumacher, no crashes, but did get a 5 second penalty for ignoring blue flags which is just quite a rookie mistake. Add that together and it's probably a 2.5, a long way off pace wise plus an unnecessary penalty, just on the whole pretty bad. So next up Alfa Romeo and an issue for Joe along with a strange performance from Valtteri that means the team came away with no points. I'll start with Bottas and I don't know if there were issues but he seemed really quite off it this weekend. Slow in quali and then in the race, you know he started alongside Joe and lost places in the first stint albeit starting on hard tyres and then before his teammate retired was behind even having not stopped. So unless I'm missing something completely it seemed a very uncharacteristic performance from him. Rating wise it's probably a 4.5, the pace just didn't seem to be there and looked kind of comfortably behind Joe. So onto his teammate Joe Guan Yu and a real shame for him having to retire with a car issue, as at the time he was having quite a nice race. He was running in 10th place having already made a stop just behind the likes of Ocon and Vettel who went on to finish 6th and 10th, so may well have been in and around the points by the end. So rating wise for the 23-24 laps that we did see, I think it's going to be a 7.5, he was arguably having his best race of the year before retiring through no fault of his own, definitely looked the quicker of the two Alfa Romeos. So next up McLaren and what by the end of it all was a decent result, not quite where they'll want to be but a double point finish is always good. For drivers I'll start with Ricardo and a race that he really needed, overall a very solid performance and that's when you consider he was probably held up a fair bit by Lando in the first stint and the team telling him not to go past. So yeah, I think for sure he had the pace in that first stint and had he been let go I don't think you'd have had the issues they sort of had at the end with team orders etc. He couldn't quite get past or ride up to Alonso but with that Alpine straight line speed nobody was really going to do that. So rating wise I think it's going to be a 7.5, a good race with solid pace and may well be his most convincing drive of the season. Then on to Lando and a P9 finish behind Ricardo and generally spent a lot of time with his teammate for this one, be it just behind or just ahead. I think pace wise on the whole was probably just behind Ricardo for this one but did a good job of making his way back up to his teammate once he pitted as he came out behind a load of cars, you know he waited an extra lap behind Alonso and it just affected his race. So for Lando I think it'll be a 7, just behind Danny Rick for this one but on the whole still a good drive. So next up Alpine and generally a very solid performance, that car was rapid in a straight line and brought home some nice points for the team. I'll start with Ocon who began the race with hard tyres which didn't overly help out, did have a nice stint where he was able to hold Hamilton behind for a number of laps, helped out by the fact that as I mentioned the Alpines were insanely fast in a straight line, eventually stopped under the second VSE for mediums and then actually kind of made no inroads into the McLarens ahead which I guess puts his race pace roughly on par if not slightly behind Alonso and Norris and Ricardo. you know those cars ahead of him. So I think rating wise for Ocon it's probably a 6, a fairly decent drive, you know just about average to slightly above but nothing overly special. Then on to Alonso and his best result of the season and generally very well driven, pretty sure he was never overtaken by anyone and did make a move past his teammate. The only real note I have for him is just being ahead of the McLarens and keeping them at an arm's length while keeping the life into his tyres. The car setup will have helped, you know that generally great straight line speed, but on the whole I think it's probably a 7.5, maybe an 8 but I'm going to stick with the slightly lower rating. A very solid drive, managing his race well and having the edge over his teammate Ocon. Next on to Aston Martin and a very impressive for them to be featured this late into the video, you know I do it in reverse order for the race that's just gone. Their biggest points haul of the year and now while behind on countback tied with Haas on points. For drivers I'll start with Stroll as there's not really a ton to cover, I have nothing much to say in my notes beside him retiring the car on lap 48. Up till that point was on a one stop hard to medium but was generally towards the back of the pack with only Latifi and Schumacher behind him when he retired. So rating wise it's probably a 4 for him, especially when you consider where Seb was at the end. And talking of Seb, a really great drive, a great finish as well of 6th. With that Aston in his hands it's definitely looking to be improving and that's great to see. Made a place up early at the start I believe, and then after the first VSC managed to jump Hamilton and was sitting ahead of him. 
He was chasing after Rockon and got past towards turn three before locking up and using the escape road. So a definite question on where he could have been without that mistake. You know, he came out just behind Sonoda, did a great job of spinning it around quickly. We've seen some cars take absolutely ages getting turned around there. And from that point onwards, still managed to finish P6. So for Seb, I think it's going to have to be a nine. That mistake does bring it down a little bit, but in all honesty, I don't think he'd have been in P4 or P5, but still, P6 is still a great drive for him. Next on to Alpha Tauri, and like Aston Martin, their best performance of the year and could have been even better had Sonoda's rear wing not broken in half. I'll start with Sonoda, who just sort of quietly made his way up into 6th place and on the whole was running a fairly solid race before, yeah, his rear wing just kind of broke in half, and the method for fixing it was just to tape it up and tell him not to use DRS. Obviously then that extra stop moved him down into 13th, but until then was in 6th place, still 10 seconds or so off of Gasly, but a great performance generally. Rating wise, I think it'll be an 8, a quietly very solid performance, undone through no fault of his own really. And then on to Gasly and the type of performance we've almost been expecting all year and now hopefully we're seeing it. P5, very good result and had the team stopped like Hamilton did, may well have had the chance to finish in P4. Did also make a nice move to get by Ricardo, which helped him then to move further ahead. In regards to Hamilton, not too much he could have done to stop being overtaken as in Hamilton getting past. So for a rating for Gasly, I think it's going to be a 9. I think the Alpha Tauri was generally a better car this weekend too, which helped him be further up the field, plus of course the Ferrari retirements, but still it's a great result and performance on the whole. Then next up Mercedes and doing what they have done all year, getting the best result that they can and actually now 38 points behind Ferrari. For drivers, I'll start with Russell and someone I have absolutely nothing written down for notes wise because well, not much really happened in his race. Stopped under both VSEs going mediums to hards and then hards again and being solidly in third place all race long once the Ferraris retired. I think rating wise, it's probably an 8.5, finished 20 odd seconds up the road from Hamilton. Of course, all of his stops went well, there wasn't traffic to deal with. On the whole, just drove a very solid, very consistently quick race. Then on to Hamilton, who, while achieving a similar result to Russell, you know, just one point back, had a much more eventful race. Was stuck behind Gasly early and then got jumped by Vettel in the stops, were given that Mercedes double sat the cars. Did get past people such as Ocon, but took a few laps to do so. But in the end, I guess you can say the progression was measured out well enough to get him to P4 by the end of the race. Also, from the looks of things, had to deal with really bad back pain from all the porpoising, you know, struggling to get out of the car at the end of it all. So on the whole, a very good drive to get back into the top four, with him being dropped back through things that weren't really his fault. So rating wise, I think for me it's either an 8.5 or a 9, but I think I'm going to stick with the 8.5. Made some good moves when he went for them, and while in clean air was at the same pace, if not slightly quicker than Russell. But had he cleared people a little bit quicker, it probably would have made life that bit easier, but still a great performance. And finally Red Bull who have picked up the most points for the 5th consecutive race now and starting to almost run away with it at the top. I'll start with Perez who took the lead into turn 1 and was extending the gap in front of Leclerc but not at a crazy level or anything, then struggled a bit with tyre degradation and making them last which is a very strange thing for Checo, had a slow pit stop which won't have helped but then once the Ferraris were out of the way just did not have the pace compared to Verstappen and ended up like 20 seconds back from him in the end which when they both had nobody around them causing issues, clean air etc, is a solid job on the whole, but still probably could have been a bit better. So rating wise, I think it'll be a 7.5, simply down to the outright pace being quite a way back from Max. It might be a bit harsh considering he finished in second, but once Leclerc retired and released Verstappen, I just don't think he looked like he had any chance of the win really. Still P2 though, and a solid race and result, not bad by any means. And lastly Verstappen, and what I'd say was one of the most calculated and composed drives we've seen from him. Wasn't desperately trying to get past Leclerc or doing anything stupid, just biding his time. Would he have got past without the different strategies? Probably. And then we saw how he had the pace over Checo quite easily. So I think for Max, it's probably going to be a 9. There's honestly not too much to say for him. Let the race come to him and made a nice move on Perez, albeit no fight back as directed by the team. But great pace on the whole and a pretty convincing win. So that rounds out the race ratings for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. I am going to add in an extra graphic after this one, so hang around just a little bit to see that. 
I think on the whole, the race was probably a little bit underwhelming. You know, we come to expect quite big things from Baku. In terms of the drivers' ratings, quite a few drivers having good races and doing fairly well. A few down towards the back, obviously Latifi, Schumacher, Stroll, but in general I think the drivers performed well. And then a few of you have been asking for this, the current sort of standings if you like for the ratings, just showing where they've been and showing how they've improved from last week. Obviously there's no graphic for it, but it's on the spreadsheet that I've got with all the driver ratings. And I'll keep updating this for each video so you can see who's jumped up and who's moved down after each race. But anyway, that's all for now. As mentioned before, do make sure to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed and subscribe for more F1 content along with leaving your thoughts, feedback, ratings and suggestions down in the comments below. But until next time, take care.